He is risen. Hey, good job. For those of you who were uh, here for the sunrise service, you had learned that on Easter we greet each other with, He is risen, and then the crowd responds. He is risen. Good job. We are here today to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. Amen? And let me first ask you, if you're a first-time visitor with us this morning, take a moment, fill out a visitor card there in the back of the pew. Place that in the offering plate in just a moment when the ushers come around so that we could have a record of your visit with us this morning. Uh, let's start our service off by going to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your blessings. God, we thank you for what this day means as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. God, if it wasn't for the resurrection, if it wasn't for the empty tomb, we'd have no reason to be here this morning. But because He is risen and risen indeed, we are here to celebrate and to give you praise, glory, and honor. And so God, as we gather together, we pray, Lord, that you prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for worship. God, worship that glorifies you and lifts you up. God, we ask that you meet with us right where we are. Lord, meet us at our point of need. Touch our hearts today. Lord, let us know that when we leave this place that we have met with you. And God, if there is one here today who's lost without you, we pray that today be the day of salvation. God, that today that they give their heart and life to you. And God, if there are any here who need to rededicate their life, or they have strayed, have gone back to who they used to be, God, we pray that today be the day that they turn and they come back and rededicate their life to you. Lord, I pray that you'll make this a memorial, memorable day. Lord, as we exalt you and lift you up, we thank you and we praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning. Let's uh, please stand and sing Because He Lives, hymn 358. And I would like to ask you... At the end, after the third verse, please, let's, uh, let's tag on my Savior lives at the end. <clears throat>
So as we make our way back to our seats, we want to go to the Lord in prayer, lifting up those who are unable to be with us this morning. We have some who are traveling, some who are sick, um, some who are recovering uh, from hospital stays. We have some who are in the hospital. So we want to pray for them and we want to pray uh, for our service today. So let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you again for this privilege of prayer that we have. And it's because of the resurrection of our Savior that we have this access to the throne of grace. And so, God, we're so thankful, Lord, that we can pray. Lord, that we can lay down our burdens. God, that we can call upon you in times of distress, in times of struggle, in times of fear. We can call on you. And, God, we know, Lord, that you are near. And, God, not only do you hear our prayer, but, God, according to your word, you said that you hear and answer according to your will. And so, God, we ask at this time, Lord, that your will be done. Lord, in our service, Lord, in each and every life in this church, and Lord, for these prayer requests that we're about to lift up to you. God, we lift up our prayer list to you. Lord, those who are sick, unable to be here, those who are traveling, those who are in the hospital, Lord, those who are in the rest homes and shut in their home, Lord, unable to be here, we pray for them. We lift them up. We ask you to have your hand upon each one of them. And Lord, we pray, Lord, for uh, our nation. Lord, we lift up the leaders of our nation. Lord, we pray that your will be done for, through them. And God, we pray for our future leaders. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, the leaders on a federal level, the state level, Lord, and even the local level. And God, we pray that you'll minister through them. But Lord, most of all, we pray if they don't know you, that you'll put someone in their path that might share the gospel with them, that they might be forever changed. And God, we pray for the church. Lord, we pray for the church across the world, the church across America. Lord, we pray that you'll use the church, Lord, to be a light in this dark world. Lord, evil is all around us, and Lord, we, we need the light. So God, I pray that you'll empower and equip the church. And Lord, I pray for Providence Baptist Church. Lord, I pray that you'll use us. Lord, that you'll use us to be a light everywhere we go, but God, corporately, that you'll use us as a light in this community. God, that we might shine that light. Lord, that people might be drawn into a personal relationship with you, that they might be forever changed. Lord, help us to reach those who are around us. And God, we pray, Lord, for our community. Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, it's so clear. There's so many around, Lord, who need the Lord, <clears throat> who are struggling. In different areas of their life, <clears throat> God, we pray for them. We lift them up to you. Lord, we pray for the family. Lord, that you'll have your hand upon the families. And Lord, we pray, Lord, for our missionaries who are overseas, who are here in North America. Lord, that you'll bless and minister through them. Lord, that you'll do the work that you've called them to do. They take the gospel to places and to people who've never heard. God, we pray for our service this morning. Be lifted up, be exalted by everything that's done, everything that's said, everything that's saying. Lord, be glorified. And Lord, we pray again that if there's one here today who's lost, we pray that today be the day of salvation. Lord, that your message will penetrate their heart. Lord, that they might be convicted and turn their life over to you. Bless this time together. Meet with us, be with us. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. After our uh, first hymn, I had asked you to do a tag, My Savior Lives, and then I promptly forgot to do it. Uh, so I think we should do it now on my signal. Let's, my, let's say, My Savior Lives. My Savior Lives. Got to get it in, because he does. Hymn 320, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Please stand.
reveal you as the blessing of the altar. Most Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for letting us each and every one come here this morning. May you put a blessing on the season that we're going through right now, Lord. Give us a second chance. May you bless the tithes and offerings that we take up today and give you your glory and your glory only. Christ's sake, amen. Let's let Marcia know how much we appreciate her coming and playing for us this morning. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to have Sonia and Haley come up here with me. I want to do a couple of songs for you. Uh, one of them, we want you guys to sing with us. All right. If, how, many, how many of you are amazed this morning at what God's done or is doing in your life? Amen. We ought to sing about it, right? So I'm going to ask you to sing, stand and I want you to sing with us. This is going to be on the screen. It's going to be a video. So you can just watch us. Stand now. <laughs> it's not Simon Says. So. But let's sing. Let's sing like you really mean it, like you really are amazed. All right? Shannon, go ahead. <clears throat> I need a little sound with it. <clears throat> 
Maybe seated. I am amazed at God's love for us without a doubt. This next song we're going to do is called Forever. And if you know this song, we want you to sing along at the chorus where it says, Forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high. Forever He is risen. He is alive. He is alive. All right, so when we get to that part, if you know this song, I want you to sing it. I want you to sing it as if He is risen. You know, I know that we're in a Baptist church, but you know, when we get to heaven, though, uh, there's a lot of shouting going on. I'm not saying that we need to run the pews or shout and scream and holler. What I'm saying, we need to be excited that the tomb is empty, right? Yeah. 
We need to be excited that He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yeah, you got to still sleep. I tell you, I'm excited. I may be the only one excited. Uh, but uh, listen to this song. Listen to the words. It's very, very powerful. Shannon, go ahead and push play. <clears throat> we got the mics on. stars they went, the morning sun was dim, the Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, His blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon Him. breath he gave as heaven looked away the son of God was laid in darkness a battle in the grave the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broke His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is risen. Could not be Father, we come to you so thankful, God, for your presence, God, for your presence here. For if it wasn't for the resurrection, God, we wouldn't even be here this morning. There'd be no need to be here. And so, God, we thank you for the empty tomb. God, we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you that you had defeated death, hell, and the grave. And there's not one person here this morning who has to leave this place destined for hell. For the message has been presented the gospel has been made known. The king is risen. Jesus is alive. And we thank you for that, God. We worship you this morning for that. 
God, let it penetrate our hearts. Let us get excited about what you have done for us. God, we are wretched sinners, wicked to the core. But God, you chose to save us and we thank you and we praise you this morning. God, we pray that as your word goes forth, that it'll touch hearts, that it'll change lives. God, that we realize who you are and where you're seated. God, that we might live every day like you are the king and like you, it is Easter. So God, we thank you and we praise you. We give you thanks. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God is good, amen. He is risen. Amen. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I don't know if you've caught on yet, but I get a little excited around Easter time. Uh, for if it wasn't for Easter, uh, we wouldn't have church. Church. Uh, John 21, 1 through 14. Anyone here amazed at God? Just raise your hand. Amen. I'm amazed at God. I tell you, when I, when I begin to look at myself... The person that I was and even the person that I am today, I'm amazed that God would even consider giving His Son, much less give His Son for me. But He had done just that, much much less call me to proclaim His gospel. And so this morning, I am just overwhelmed with amazement for God. And so thank God for His mercy. Thank God for His grace. Amen? We've gathered together this morning. Maybe I'm too excited and you're still asleep. I don't know. I don't know. I, um, we get a little amen. I don't know that. I don't know. But I'm excited this morning. We gathered here to celebrate, to worship our risen Savior, to celebrate the greatest event in all of history. And as a believer, it ought to thrill you. It ought to thrill you this morning uh, to be here to worship Him and to make Him known. To be here and remember and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope that you've already been blessed. I hope that you've already been blessed maybe by the sunrise service, maybe by the fellowship and breakfast, maybe in Sunday school, hopefully by the singing and the time we've already had together. Hopefully you've already been blessed. Because I believe if we was to close the service right now and go on home, we could all say that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord because we are indeed blessed. And we sing praises to Him. And so I hope that you can say that you are blessed this morning as we celebrate. See, we're blessed because He is risen. We all get that we're here to celebrate the resurrection today. I know that you get that. But my question to you is, is what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Jesus, of course, will still be resurrected, right? He's not going to die again. He is eternal. And so tomorrow Jesus will still be resurrected. He'll still be working in our life, right? Uh, I know I have a lot of work to do. I'm sure that uh, some of you have a lot of work to do in your life as well. But how will you be tomorrow? How will you be tomorrow? What will your attitude be like? What will your mentality be tomorrow when Monday morning rolls around? Will you live like Jesus is alive? Or will you live as if Jesus is still in the grave? This morning I want to look at an incident in Peter's life following the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do we have anybody here this morning that can relate to Peter a little bit? Just me? Well, we got one. We got two. There's a couple of us in here. Well, Peter uh, had some great qualities without a doubt. I mean, he was the leader of the disciples, but he had a knack of of taking his foot and inserting it into his mouth. If you know anything about the Gospels, you know that about Peter. Now, do we have anybody that can relate to Peter? I thought there'd be a few more of those. I've gotten a little bit better about this over time. Just, Just a little bit better. Uh, I used to say things to Sonia or, or about Sonia before I ever thought about how it sounds. Let me just kind of give you one example. Uh, one Valentine's banquet, um, a while back, we were playing the newlywed game, okay? Now, we were actually newlyweds at the time. We hadn't been married that long. Uh, so we're playing the newlywed game at the church we attended. And let me just say, this is a fun game, but a bad idea for newlyweds. Right? I know it's a newlywed game, but it's a bad idea for newlyweds, at least from my perspective. And you'll understand why in just a moment. 
But we hadn't been married very long, like I said a moment ago, and we weren't in the ministry yet. And so I was young and dumb. Now I'm just dumb. Um, <laughs> but anyway, one of the questions was this. Bad question. This is it. It says, if there was something you could change about your spouse, what would it be? That is a bad question. Now, son, you got the answer first, okay? And Sonia, being the wonderful, sweet, innocent wife she is, answered, nothing. There's nothing I would change about him. He is perfect. <laughs> Don't ask her now. <laughs> that list is as long as the Great Wall of China. So uh, she's had time to come up with a few. Uh, but... Don't ask her now. My answer to that question still haunts me to this day. As a matter of fact, it was just brought up this weekend, my answer to that question some time ago. Uh, bad answer, all right? It's, especially since she said nothing about me. Now, my answer was her height. <laughs> something she can't change. Nothing that she can improve upon. I, don't, I didn't know. I didn't know that was bad. That was very bad. And so I say, <laughs> that's right, shame on me. I hear that all the time. I tell her, now, babe, you're perfect. That ain't what you said 20 years ago. <laughs> but anyway, that's what, that was what I said. But here, uh, to plead my case, I did not know that we could say nothing, right? I didn't know that. Because nothing is, is not something. And it said, name something. Nothing's not something. So that's my, that's my plead. But anyway, Sonia and I have been together some 20 plus years and, and that comment still haunts me. But if I would have thought about what to say before saying it or for blurting that out, I would have been far better off. So needless to say, I can relate to Peter when it comes to saying and, and doing things before thinking. Now in our passage this morning, uh, we find Peter uh, sometime after seeing Jesus resurrected doing something before he actually thought about it. So he went and did something before putting in a thought uh, to what he was doing. And that's what I want to speak on this morning. So John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, let's read what the... Apostle John had to write, John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And these things, Jesus showed, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, uh, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples were together. Simon Peter uh, said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. And so they went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they called nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. And then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And so they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have caught. And Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now, 
one of the first things that I want you to notice about this passage of Scripture uh, was that this was the third time that Jesus had shown himself that he had appeared to his disciples. And so Peter knew that Jesus was alive. All right? He knew that Jesus was alive. But even with that knowledge, even with knowing that Jesus was alive, he did something that we all must avoid. Peter did something that we all must avoid. So what did Peter do? What did he do that was all that bad? We just read the text. He didn't cuss nobody out. Didn't say curse like he did before his resurrection. So what did he do that was all that bad that we ought to avoid? Well, let's look back at verse 2 and verse 3 again. It says, Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. So what did they do? Peter went back fishing. He went back to fishing. Now that doesn't sound all that bad to us, Right? After all, if fishing was a sin, we'd be in trouble. A lot of us would be in trouble. A lot of fishing goes on with the people of this church. And so uh, if it's a sin, we're in trouble. But, But that's not the issue here. It's not the sin of fishing, all right? It's not a sin to fish. But what Peter did was he went back to his old self. Do you see that? He went back to his old self. He went back to doing the things he used to do. Now, if we were to go back to before Peter had an encounter with Jesus, we would see that Peter was a fisherman, right? Luke chapter 5, we see that. Now, what makes this fishing trip, this going fishing so bad, was the fact that Jesus had called Peter to something greater. He had called Peter to something higher, to be more than a fisherman. As a matter of fact, he told him, I want you to be a fisher of men. Jesus had called Peter to be his disciple, the Messiah's disciple. He he called Peter uh, to be a man that would impact the world for all time. Not just his world, but the world for all time. Jesus even told Peter before the crucifixion that he would be an integral part to the establishment of the church. And so Jesus had a grand plan for Peter's life, right? You see that? He had a grand plan for Peter's life. But Peter went back to doing what he used to do to the person he used to be. So what does that have to do with us? Well, we're here today and we're celebrating the resurrection. And today is a wonderful day. Today is a beautiful day. Even though it's raining and overcast, today is a beautiful day. God is meeting with us. He is meeting with us and we are blessed. But what about tomorrow? Yes, if we are granted tomorrow, we will still be blessed. But will we still be celebrating and worshiping our risen Lord? Doing what He has called us to do. Will we, be sti- will we still be celebrating and worshiping our risen Lord doing what He has called us to do? Will you be like Peter after meeting with Jesus today? Will you go back to be the person you used to be? Will you go back doing the things that you used to do, hanging around the people you used to hang around with? Or will you live each day like Jesus is risen? risen Amen. Will you live each day like Jesus is risen? risen Who here wants to live every day as if Jesus is out of the tomb. (laughs) Then you must answer the very same question that Jesus asked Peter. You have to answer the very same question that Jesus asked Peter. Look down to verse 15 at this question. And so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Do you love me more than these? 
He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. Now before we get into the question that Jesus asked, notice that Jesus called Peter by his original name, Simon. Did you catch that? He didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon. Even though Jesus had changed his name to Peter, right? Remember he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Changed Peter's name to Petra, small rock. And then he said he's going to build his church upon the, the big rock, which is him, the foundation, right? You remember that passage? And so he changed his name to Peter. But yet here he addressed him as Simon. Why did Jesus do this? Well, Jesus, in a way, was calling Peter out for going back to who he used to be. So he called him out for going back to who he was. So he called him by the name that he used to go by. Now, I know that you parents can relate. Uh, Sonia, she has an affectionate name that she calls our children. And for Anthony, uh, she calls him brother, right, and, or buddy. She's, he's always been her, her little buddy. He's the only boy. And so when Anthony hears those names... He knows that he's all right, all right? But if he hears Anthony Kerr, um, he, better, he better listen up. As a matter of fact, he, his ears pro- I just saw his ears perk up just now. When he hears that middle name, he knows I better listen. I better pay attention. It's probably the same for Peter as well. Jesus didn't call him by his affectionate name. And he got Peter's attention. And he was dialed in on what Jesus was talking about or what he was about to tell him. And so Jesus gets Peter's attention here. And I hope that Jesus has your attention this morning as well because he wants you to ask, he wants you to answer the same question that he asked Peter. More importantly than what Jesus called him was the question that Jesus asked him. And one that I believe that Jesus is asking us today. So let's look back at verse 15. Let's look at this, let's look at this question again. Verse 15. And so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? One of those open-ended questions there, right? It's debatable to what, exactly what Jesus is referring to when he says more than these. Uh, Some say that Jesus is basically saying, do you love me more uh, than the other disciples love me? In other words, he's saying, Peter, do you love me the most? I don't don't think that's what Jesus is saying here. It's hard to imagine Jesus comparing our love for him to someone else's love for him. Throughout scriptures, we're told not to compare ourselves to others. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible says that Jesus is our standard. And we don't compare to the ways of the world and the people of the world that Jesus is our standard. So I don't think that that's what Jesus is asking him. He's not asking him, do you love me more than the other disciples love me? I don't think that's what he was saying here. Some say that Jesus was asking Peter if he loved him more than he loved the other disciples. In other words, uh, he asked him, he says, "Do do you love me more than you love these guys, your fishing buddies? Peter, do you love me more than you love your fishing buddies here? It could be that. It may be that. I I don't know for sure. I don't think that's what Jesus is is getting at here. When I look at the context of the Scripture here, it's about Peter going back fishing to what he was comfortable with, to where he used to be, back to what he knew and what he liked. See, that's the context. So when Jesus asks Peter, do you love me more than these? What I believe he's referring to is fish. I believe he's referring to fishing. And so he's asking Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me more than you love to fish? Peter, do you love me more than you love fishing? Because what did Peter do after he found out uh, or didn't know what to do or wandering around? He said, hey, look, I'm bored. I'm going back fishing. And so Jesus said, do you love me more than these, more than fishing, more than fish? And so Jesus is saying, do you love me more than fish or fishing? Do you love me more than being comfortable? Do you love me more than what is familiar? Do you love me more than what you enjoy doing? Do you love me more than these? This is a real eye-opener for me. 
This was a real eye-opener for me over the last year or so because I could hear Jesus from this scripture say, Bo, do you love me more than that house at 189 Antelope Drive in Mount Holly, North Carolina? Bo, do you love me more than your hometown of Stanley and your home church of New Life Baptist Church? Do you love me more than you love the comfort of your family? Do you love me more than these. That's what Jesus said to me. And he's asking us that same question. Do you love me more than these? What is it in your life that Jesus is asking, do you love me more than these? Do you, do you, know, do you know what keeps people from being all that God wants them to be? Loving things more than loving Him. Loving things more than loving Him. That's what keeps us from being all that God calls us and wants us to be. Loving things. Loving our time. Loving our space. Loving our whatever. Fill in the blank. That's what keeps us from being all that God wants us to be. But yet we'll sit back and say, God, use me. Only when i got time and yet we never have time. And that's a sermon for another day. So in closing... We've gathered here to celebrate, to remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And today has been a wonderful day. God has met with us, but what about tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Will you go back to who you used to be, doing the things you used to do with the people you used to do them things with? Or will you surrender your life? Will you surrender your plans to Him? Will you surrender your life and plan so that God can work in your life. See, this message speaks to the church as well. Providence, listen up. I know that we got a lot of visitors in here, but this message speaks to you as well. It speaks to all of us. God has a plan for Providence. I've said this many times, and we're celebrating His plan today, the resurrection, yes. But the key is not to go back who we used to be. The key is not doing things the way we used to do. Listen, it's time to love Christ more than tradition. It's time to love Christ more than what's comfortable. It's time to love Christ more than what we enjoy or what we like to do. It's time to love Christ more than these. Isn't that what he called Peter? Now what he asked Peter? And so I am calling out Providence Baptist Church. It's time to love Christ more than these. It's time to do and be what He has called us to be. If you've never given your life to Christ, then I want you to answer the question, what is it in my life that's keeping me from giving my life to Jesus? If you've never given your life to Christ, you're not saved, you know you're not saved, answer that question, what is it inside of me that's keeping me from giving my life to Jesus? And then I want you to ask, is it worth it? Or I want you to answer, is it worth it? Whatever it is, I want to party, I want to have fun, I want to do what I want to do. I, I, I don't want this or do want that, whatever it is. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Whatever it is you're hanging on to, is it worth missing out on heaven? and eternal life? The answer is no. There's nothing on this earth. There's no thing on this earth worth missing out on heaven. I beg you to come and give your life to Christ. Christian, Jesus is asking you this morning as well, do you love me more than these? Maybe there's something in your life that you have that you've lifted up above Jesus. That you've kind of put God on the back burner. You've gone back to who you used to be. Maybe you were saved at one time, but yet you're not living the way you should. Being who you're supposed to be. You've let things get in. Maybe work. Maybe some kind of pleasure. Whatever it is, you've kind of let it creep in. And Jesus is asking you this morning, not me. Doesn't matter how much you love me. But Jesus is asking you, do you love me more than these? The altar will be open for anybody who wants to be saved this morning. The altar will be open for anybody who wants to come and pray. Maybe there's somebody here who needs to lay down their burden. Maybe there's somebody here who needs to, you need to pray for. The altar's open if you'll come and pray. The altar will be open to come and join our fellowship here 
at Providence Baptist Church as we try to impact our community. So I ask you to stand. I ask our musicians to come, to Ronnie to come. Father, we thank you and we praise you again for this day. Lord, this Easter day, a day of celebration. Lord, the greatest day, the greatest worship service of the year is today. And God, we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you are here ministering to us, calling us. Lord, even though we're like Peter, doing things before we think, before we act. Or saying things. Letting things come in between our relationship with you, God. Uh, help us to be like Peter. To, to eventually surrender everything over to you. Or that you might do a work in our life and our heart. Lord, help us uh, to be all you called us to be. Lord, help us to get rid of those things that are hindering us from being what you called us to be. Lord, we pray that you'll ease burdens today. Lord, that you'll minister to us in such a mighty way. We thank you and we praise you. Of course, in Jesus', Jesus name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Hymn 305, Jesus Paid It All. service of the year as if you can't tell I'm excited because I realize the importance of the resurrection and boy is it beautiful boy is it beautiful, amen few announcements, no church tonight spend time with your family um, spend time resting and uh, Wednesday night we'll have our regular worship service, make time uh, to be here for that uh, that 
minutes at 7 o'clock. No Alana tonight either. Uh, are there any other announcements we need to make mention of that we're scrolling on the screen for the most part, but anything special we need to make mention of? Office will be closed tomorrow, um, so you can drop by if you want, but then if they can see anybody here. There you go. All right, hearing none, I'm going to ask if Anthony will close in a word of prayer. 